2016 Midland Public Schools Board of Education meeting. If everyone would please turn off their phones, like turn them all the way off. We had some issues at our last meeting where they weren't um, completely turned off. It interferes with our TV feed. I would really appreciate it. And at this time, if everyone would stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, the flag of, the of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Scott, if you could take roll. Gladly. Uh, President Brandstad. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Treasurer Wasserman. Here. Member Baker. Member Frizee. Member Gordon. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. All right, I have a seven, thank you. Next up is item two, the consent agenda, mm -hmm. 2.1, approval of the regular min meeting minutes from February 22nd. Item 2.2, following staff members have announced their resignations. 2.3, Marissa Poole is recommended for employment for Special Ed at Northeast. 2.4 is a food service equipment purchase, which is being purchased with food service funds. 2.5 is the summer wage rates for this summer, 2016. 2.6 is our renewal of our um, auditors, Yo and Yo. And 2.7 are legal <coughs> invoices for payment. I moved, uh, moved to approve the consent agenda 2.1 through 2.7. All right, Jerry moves. Support. Scott supports. Is there any discussion? Yeah, it's interesting how Yo and Yo has kept our audit fees relatively flat through the years, especially as we're taking on the bond issue yeah. now, which yeah. is even bigger than back in the day when we were doing uh, sinking fund. dollars or something over four years, not yeah. bad. Not yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. I'd like yeah. to thank them for that. The fees back to 2010 are listed in the agenda today. And uh, so Yvonne had brought up a point that um, these new food service equipment purchases being done with um, food service funds, not general funds. All right, no other questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, moving on to item 3.0, Mike. We're going to do our shining stars, and our first one is Mr. Watkins. <coughs> Come up. And you stand next to me while I'm reading all kinds of good stuff about you. <laughs> <laughs> Steve has been with MPS since 2013 as a paraprofessional at H.H. Dow High. Mr. Watkins is a Dow High alumni graduating in 1988. He earned his bachelor's degree in history from Alma College in 1992. Before coming to MPS, Steve taught and coached at the middle and high school levels at McBain Public Schools for 20 years. In addition to his paraprofessional responsibilities, Mr. Watkins is currently the assistant track coach at HH Dow High. Steve was nominated for the Shining Star by the MPF's colleague. Here are some of her comments. Steve, though a certified teacher, works as a paraprofessional in my physics class. He is always extraordinary, helpful in my classroom. But recently, he offered to show my physics students a real-life use of projectile motion by inviting his track shop at girls to demonstrate the various angles and forces used to get the greatest distance. Hmm. About this point, I was <laughs> worrying about the gym floor, but it, <laughs> or it wasn't the gym that he arranged. He arranged the use of the gym, and he had all the materials necessary to have a terrific demonstration. He invented he invited the physics students to work out the mathematics involved in the force and distance and the physics behind the body's movement. He went way beyond the expected job of a paraprofessional, and my students certainly benefit. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Yes. I did see your being graduated. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And our second shining star is Bernadette Wood. Bernadette would come up. And while she's coming up, I'll read some good things about Bernadette. Miss Wood earned her bachelor's degree from Central Michigan University in 1986 on her master's degree from SVSU in 2000. Bernadette had more than seven years of teaching experience before joining MPS in 1996. Her MPS career began as a special education teacher at Central Intermediate School. 
In 2013, Bernadette Dad joined the Northeast Middle School staff as a special education teacher. In 2015, Bernadette was chosen to serve as a co-teacher leader for the middle school math. Bernadette was nominated for the Shining Star by an MPS colleague. Here are some of her comments. Bernadette Wood daily goes above and beyond what is expected. Examples recently include organizing the Science Club at Northeast with prominent members of the community participating each week to share their scientific expertise with approximately 50 students. As a co-teacher, Bernadette participates in all hours of planning that a regular education teacher puts in. She's involved in all levels of the classroom. In our PLC group, Bernadette took a lead position and shares usable strategies for all content areas because of her extensive training and years of service in the special education <coughs> department. She has taken on a math leadership role of the district as well, and she is an inspiration to me and so many others. Congratulations, Bernadette. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you, Thank you very much. In our second, uh, we have a presentation today, and Scott Cochran, our curriculum specialist, will introduce the group he's brought with him tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Cochran, Auxiliary Education Curriculum Specialist, and I'm here uh, to introduce you to our healthcare technology program. And we have a great group, a very distinguished group, to talk with you. I'm going to talk a little bit, and then they're going to come up to the podium. Uh, from Delta College, we have Jennifer Duncan, and from uh, the Mid Michigan uh, Medical Center, uh, we have uh, Colleen Markle and Ashley Rates Myers, and then we have two of our students, Daisha Miller and Sydney Ernst, and they'll all come up and talk to you in just a little bit. So before uh, before they do that, let me give you a quick mm -hmm. overview. This is one of our uh, Career Tech Ed or CTE programs, and we talk all the time in education about being college and career ready, which is very important, obviously. Uh, it's our core mission, and it's what we do. And after uh, 20 years in public education, I don't know of a program that, that's more uh, targeted at helping students be college and career ready than our healthcare technology program. One of the neat things about it is it's a great partnership uh, between the Midland Public Schools, uh, Delta College, and the Mid-Michigan uh, Health, uh, Mid-Michigan Medical Center. So all partners work together uh, and we truly cannot do it without them. Uh, typically our students go through uh, a two-year process as part of the program. They'll start off in their junior year, and this you have these slides in front of you there. Uh, in their junior year, students will take healthcare technology at their home high school, so at Midland High School or Dow High School. And at the same school, they'll also take anatomy and physiology. So that they'll take those two classes in preparation, and then towards the end of the winter, mm -hmm. uh, they'll apply for the healthcare two uh, sequence. And then as seniors, the students that make it into the program, uh, actually just take one class at their home high school, and that would typically be their English class, although we occasionally have students that also go to school for band or for other specialty courses. Uh, but typically just take their English class at the high school, and then they'll go to Delta College uh, for three hours. So in the fall semester, uh, they'll take their uh, math class, they'll take medical ethics and uh, medical term terminology, at Delta College, and then in, in this semester, second semester, they'll take the Certified Nursing Assistant class. And you'll hear more about that class uh, from the teacher in just a couple minutes. And also, uh, a, a number of the students, 15 students are in the program, have the opportunity to work as co-ops at the Mid-Michigan Medical Center. So what they'll do there is they'll work for 15 hours a week, so three hours a day, five days a week, every day that they're in school, they're also going to the hospital and they're putting in a, a regular shift there on one of the floors. And you'll hear from a couple of our students that are doing that this year. Um, and it's really, it's truly a life-changing experience and really a, a wonderful uh, experience for those students. And what do they receive from this? At the end of all this, by the end of their senior year, obviously they graduate from high school, uh, but they're also qualified to take the Certified Nursing Assistant in exam, so the CNA exam. And once they take and pass that exam, which many of our students do, uh, and and they also have to turn 18, uh, then they're eligible to work as a, as a CNA, as a certified nursing assistant at that point. So the moment they walk out the door, they're ready to work. Uh, and some students will continue to do that. That'll, that's their objective, that's the, what they wanna do. Uh, they're ready for work. 
Other students will uh, take their experience and go to college, whether it be for a two-year degree, a four-year degree, or you know, further on in their medical studies, of course. And uh, the neat thing about that is those students, while going to school, can work uh, as a CNA. So they can work in the field that they're interested in going into. And if, uh, if you were like me, I mean, I worked as a, as a waiter and did lots of other, uh, you know, kind of odd jobs, if you will, through college. And they were great and they were good experiences, but they weren't the field I wanted to be in. These students will have the opportunity to work in the field that they want to be in. Another way to look at it is while they're in high school, uh, they receive two credits towards graduation. They graduate with their peer group and they have a college experience and a work experience and they're prepared for that CNA exam. Uh, in Delta College, they'll earn 12 credits, uh, the math, ethics, med term, and the CNA class. And in the CNA class, they get additional work experience as well. And then they'll also have their hospital work experience, 15 hours per week for the entire school year, so about 38, 40 weeks of the year. Uh, and oftentimes we hear from the students that they just, they don't want that part to end. You know, they're really excited about it, so. That's a quick overview. Does anybody have any questions about that part of it? Yes? Is the hospital work experience paid or volunteer? It's a paid co-op. Okay. Yeah. And we're very thankful to Colleen and Ashley and our partners at the hospital for doing that. I know they have to fight for that every year. Their budgets are tight just like ours. So. Two yeah. questions. Um, what are the prereqs <coughs> before your junior year? And, and, what, um, and then how many of our kids are participating? Sure. Uh, to prepare for the healthcare tech and the anatomy and physiology classes, you need to have a solid science background. So we would expect that the students were successful in their previous science classes. Uh, but really beyond that, you need to be a serious student. You know? And we have students that are all over the board. Uh, sometimes if you walk around the schools, you'll hear kids calling themselves uh, a .2 student or a .3 or a .4. I, I don't necessarily like to refer to them that way, but students will call themselves that. Students from all different uh, backgrounds and academic backgrounds do very well in this program. So there's really no restriction that way. In order to make it to the Healthcare Tech 2, though, as a senior, they need to have good attendance. That's one of the things we take into account because you're working every day at the hospital. You've got to show up. People are counting on you. Uh, so we take that into account and we take into account their grades and their anatomy and physiology and their healthcare tech class. Uh, we have 24 students that are eligible to receive spots in Healthcare Tech 2. And of those 24, 15 have the opportunity to be co-ops. Other questions before we get to the stars of the show? Well, I was going to ask what yeah. they do in at the hospital, but I didn't know if I should we'll wait get to that. until they yeah. mm -hmm. come up. We'll get to that. All right. Any other questions for me? You said we have slots for 24. Right. Yes. How many do we have? Uh, I want to say this year, uh, I think we started with 18, and right now there's about 16. Okay. In the, which is, a, this was a light year for us. Uh, I will say that uh, we had the other issue this year. You know, we had 24 spots. We had more than that apply for, for to be in healthcare tech next, next year. year. So we have 24 people that have earned spots, plus we have several alternates eagerly waiting in case a spot opens up. Okay. Um, that's where we kind of like to be. Um, and, you know, we have our initial sign-up numbers for Healthcare Tech 1 for next year, for the juniors for next year, are, are, up, are up quite a bit. In fact, we might have to talk about that at some point. So, um, so that's a good thing, too. Okay. So did you say that all 24 of them then get to co-op or all of the There students? are 15 co-op co spots. So they need spots. to interview for those spots. Okay, they put their question. job skills, uh, job interview skills to work. And uh, there's always more that want those slots than earn them. Mm -hmm. Do they interview at, at the hospital with, Correct. The chat, with the human resources? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. They have to impress these guys. <laughs> and then the students that are in the Healthcare Tech 2 program that are not co-oping take half their schedule at the high school and then half their schedule at Delta College. So they still have the opportunity to get the coursework in. Oh, okay. So do most students who graduate through this program have like an average of 15 credits or? Uh, it is a total of 12 credits that they earn through Delta College. So they all earn the whole 12 credits? Yes. Yep. They earn 12 credits for that program and that concurrently they're earning two credits towards their high school, in their high school as well. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, well let's get to the good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna start off with uh, Sydney Ernst, one of our Midland High School students. Sydney, why don't you come on up? <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm a senior at Midland High School. My name is Sydney Ernst, and I am dual enrolled through Delta, and I work at 
um, Mid Michigan Healthcare and the Progressive Care Unit. Um, I have learned so much throughout this experience that I probably could not tell you most of it. Um, I learned how to take and record vitals. I learned how to make beds the correct way, as they say. Um, I do bed baths, showers, um, basically taking care of people at their most vulnerable time in their lives, whether it be when they're in their 30s or their 80s. Um, some of the cool things I got to see were um, bladder scans, x-rays. I got to see an amputated leg that had just been done, which was pretty cool for me at least. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got to see a stress test and many other things at the hospital throughout being to work there. Um, more importantly, at the hospital, I have wor um, learned compassion, caring, leadership, and understanding skills. I have learned people skills and communication skills, working with families, patients, the doctors, the nurses, and the other PCTs that I work with every day. Um, my Delta classes have taught me the skills, and working at the hospital has given me the opportunity to learn and do them, as well as just learning them in the lab with the people my age. I chose to participate in the healthcare tech program because I thought that I wanted to go into the medical field. Having the opportunity to co-op at the hospital has given me firsthand experience that it, what it would be like. Um, um, working there has confirmed that, and this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I will be starting that path into nursing at SVSU next fall. Thank you. And we'll have a chance for questions at the end for, for the whole group. Um, thank you, Sydney, very much. Uh, next, we'll have from Mid Michigan Health, uh, Colleen Markle, and I think Ashley Rates Myers is going to come up too. They're going to tag team this part. And these are our partners who help uh, help our students co-op at the hospital. Thanks for having us. I'm Colleen Markle, and this is Ashley. Um, we do the hiring um, for the co-ops. We're part of Human Resources. Um, this is going to be our ninth year running um, with this program. It is a program we're very proud of. Um, all three of the organizations, Midland Public School, the hospital, and Delta College, we have some outstanding people that really care about the kids. And so in the nine years, we have made adjustments throughout the, that time. Many of the recommendations have come from the kids. After the program, we meet with them, we have a little party, and we talk about what's next for them. But they also recommend, uh, we do an evaluation, and they also recommend what they would like for the next year. One of the important things that we have done to ease their transition into the hospital, you have to imagine these kids come into the hospital through the front door. I can't even <laughs> believe they walk through on their first day. We're there to greet them. But they come into an organization where people's lives are at stake, right? And we have highly educated people at the hospital that know what they're doing, that do this every day, and we invite the kids in to um, not only work, because they have to be punctual, they have to park in the correct spot every day <laughs> and that kind of thing. Um, they have to organize their lives with their school. They're, they become very independent over the years. <coughs> but the thing that happens is when they come to work, I tell them it doesn't matter if they've had a bad grade on the test or if they've been up all night studying, if something's going on at home, they have to come to work and care for patients and put a smile on their face because it's not about them, it's about the patients and it's a learning process throughout the year. So not only do they work and they earn minimum wage, but they learn, um, like Sydney said, they, earn, they learn compassion and what it takes to care for patients at the bedside. These patients, it takes a lot to get admitted to the hospital these days, right? You have to be very sick and the things that they see um, we invite Scott and the co-op counselors into the hospital and we have what we call debriefing sessions quarterly and we hear from the kids what's going on. Do they feel part of the team? What kind of conversations have they had with patients and the other professionals? And the things that they have experienced, we laugh and some of the situations you could cry and uh, we have one co-op that's with EMS and she goes out in the ambulance with the paramedics. Oh, I know, and it's amazing the stories. Anna Alsop is one of our other co-ops that is in the emergency room. The stories, I mean, it's unbelievable at this age, they're 17 years old, what they experience, right? 
it changes their lives. It changes them as people. And so every year when it comes budget time at the hospital, I you know do Father, Son, Holy Spirit because I believe in this program so much. And I'll have Ashley talk about <coughs> some of the things that they learn, but um, most of them, like Scott said, at, because we're going to be saying goodbye to our co-ops at the end of May here, beginning of June, and they don't want to leave. And I know you gotta leave, you have <laughs> to you know, go on to the next phase of your life. But, and for some of them, because of the CNA class, for some of them, they work as CNAs, and that's their end point, which we feel proud of because not everyone is college bound, right? So, but for the others, it's just the start. And we find that most college programs, because we work with a lot of college, the, the area colleges and a lot of college students, they are requiring this type of experience even to just apply to PT, nursing, <coughs> pharmacy, whatever, whatever their goal is. And you can't get that from a volunteer experience. You have to get that from being at the bedside. And so these students, they have that, they know it. They can talk about it during their interview and they wow their co-op uh, or their college advisors because of the experiences that they've had. Go ahead, Ashley. I kind of already touched on this a little bit, but I just wanted to talk about some of the skills that they gain. And so while there's certainly a very technical piece of this as they're seeing, you know, daily care and things that other providers do and, and all of those healthcare professionals that work at our facility, but in addition to that, a lot of those soft skills that you, you know, they have an opportunity to learn through employment here, you know, organization skills, communication, teamwork, being accountable, um, they do have certainly learn a level of professionalism. In addition to that, you know, they're very independent. They have autonomy with this program, so they really have to be um, very organized in their time management skills, you know, making sure they make it to work, to their classes in high school and all of that, you know, keeping up on, on many aspects of their life at that point. Um, and then in addition, you know, as we've discussed, certainly providing compassionate care, whether that's just lending um, a helpful ear or actually like, you know, hands-on um, contributing to patient care. They have a whole spectrum of all of that. And it truly is a life-altering experience for all of them. Lastly, i just like to say at our final meeting with the co-ops um, at the end of the year, most of them, I would say 90% of them, have changed what they are going to major in. Mm -hmm. So they come in and during the interview we ask them, what would you like to major in? Do you have a plan for after school? What is it going to be after high school? And many of them pick nursing, it could be medicine, it could be you know, a wide range. Almost all of them change what they're going to major in because of the experience they've had at the hospital. They're exposed to all the professions. And whether it's dietary, you know, if you want to be a dietitian, physical therapy, pharmacy, nursing, medicine. Um, we have one co-op there that thought he wanted to go into radiology. Now he's going to go to uh, med school and he wants to major in pathology. I mean, it just changes them. It gives them focus. Any questions for us? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I have to. Yeah, have to. <clears throat> Do you know anything about your rate of retention post-program? Uh, in terms it of is very hard to quantify, and, and this is the reason. Because most of the students go away to school, we do have a fair amount that stay in the area. We do have some that, if they are staying in the area, they do come back to the hospital um, if they can secure a position. It's usually a casual position mm -hmm. as a CNA okay. because of their school schedule. But we do have them in long-term care, that kind of thing but it's constantly changing because of where they've chosen to go to school. Okay. I, I have some more, but uh, please go ahead. Go ahead. How are the students exposed to different careers within the medical field? Is that built into the, the weeks that they're involved at the hospital? They start the first day of school and they're there almost to the end, um, but throughout the school year, they are at the bedside with the patients. Now, when everyone comes to round or visit the patient, because it takes a team of people to take care of the patients, physical therapy is there, pharmacy is there, the lab is there, um, the person that's doing the EKG is there, um, all the um, physicians and the consultants, they're all there at the bedside. They get an opportunity to hear what is being said and also to ask questions. They are there to work, but we also understand that they're students and they're there to learn. Thank you. 
So they stay in the same area then? They're assigned the a floor. Time. Mm -hmm. And that happens through the process. My background is nursing. I've been a nurse for 20 years who happened to be, I'm now in human resources. This was the perfect job for me. Uh, because when we do the interviews, there's several of us in the interview. And between the three of us, they have to interview. It's like a panel interview that they get to experience. But I get a sense, because I know all the floors at the hospital, what would be appropriate. For instance, we may have a very introverted person that says he or she wants to go to the emergency room. I know from the interview that that is not a successful place for that student. Then we have some real go-getters like Anna Alsop, who is in the emergency room, thriving. I knew she would. And so between the three of us, I can honestly say we've had some very good pairing. Mm -hmm. Do they have the opportunity to change their assignment during the course of the year, or do they stay in the same assignment, same they, area? Typically, they stay in the same assignment. We do encourage the students to do some job shadow opportunities. They're not providing any care, but they do get to see a different area. But they have daily duties. They are part of a team, and so they are expected to show up every day and be part of that team. They're there the same hours, either morning or afternoon. And they're part of the team, just like as if you and I were showing up for a job. We do allow, I don't know if anyone had this question, we haven't brought it up, but they are allowed to change their hours a little bit. We have students that are in band and the swim team and things like that. We do accommodate that. The, the nursing managers it, are all um, aware that they're students. The spring breaks, the Christmas breaks, they still are students in that sense. We do recognize that. Yeah. I think I'm the only one in the room that was here when this was created. I remember being excited about it, and everybody's enthusiasm just Ashley warms was my part heart. Of our first group <laughs> yeah, just, of just, co she was. just warms my heart. Yeah. I, I'm so pleased. Um, and I'll talk something about something else later in the general comment. But you were talking about, you know, the, and I never had an appreciation till this, not at the beginning, but now. We're putting significantly younger people into some potentially interesting situations. Yes. And it never dawned on me from that perspective. Do you find many students have difficulties handling those situations? Have you found them maybe deciding this isn't for me because of what they've dealt with? Uh, talk to me a little bit about that emotional mm -hmm. adaptability, et cetera. I can say over the last eight years, because we'll be going into our ninth, over the last eight years, I've had one student that was uh, assigned to one of our intensive care units at the hospital. She had a very hard time with that area because the patients are so sick and it's very technical, right, with all the equipment. Um, a lot of families that are very emotional, that kind of thing. She was having trouble handling it. And so right away, I switched her to a different floor where she thrived. It, they were less acute patients, so we do recognize that. Ashley and I and one of our other team members, we round on the students. Okay. We do that monthly because we need to be in touch with them. Uh, there have been other situations that they've been uncomfortable that they need to talk to us about. So especially at these debriefing sessions, we shut the door and we say whatever is said in here stays in here. But they have to be able to vent. The other difficulty is their phone and Facebook and Twitter. They can't put any of their experiences yep, out there, right? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> kids are so, you know, socially adept that way. And so that is a learning experience for them as well. <laughs> That's something we have to do with nine years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and my second question, and I don't want to get a cart in front of a horse, uh, as we do more and more STEM-oriented stuff, I'm expecting more kids to be more interested in some of these kind of areas. That's where the Actually, growth we serve on a STEM and, committee for Delta uh, College. That's and n the registered nurse is the number one STEM career. Yes, in exactly. And yeah. I, I see the healthcare being much more a drawer of of talent than engineering and other fields. It's right. just going to be massive. What's your capacity to expand? Well, you know, we have budgetary concerns. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't is know. Is it budget or is it opportunities and, and slots that you can manage? Well, we do, I can honestly say we do have budgetary constraints because of health care, uh, mm -hmm. reimbursement, those types of things. So we are accountable to that. And like I said, it's still a paid position and I would love to keep it that way. I don't know if it will stay that way. For 
this fall, it has been approved. And you know, like I said, I, I'm iffy whether that's going to be approved. Our administration has recognized the importance of this because they're our future, right? Mm -hmm. For all of us, we're mm -hmm. all, they're all going to be taking care of us. If, if there was some magic fairy dust tomorrow that made the money issue go away, yeah. I was thinking more in terms of, of the capacity to deal with it, meaning how many more can you absorb, how many different situations do you have, or are you at the limits of being able to manage that situation the way you're managing it? We could accommodate more. Okay. And you have to remember, we also have um, high schools in, or sorry, hospitals in Gratiot, Claire, and Gladwin, mm -hmm. and soon to be Alpena. And so we have a huge capacity. We also, through workforce development, we offer thousands, we grant thousands of hours of job shadows and internships. Okay. Unpaid, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we do give a lot of opportunity for kids to come into the hospital for a small amount of time to see what is happening there, where these kids get an First. unbelievable mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And back to your question regarding what they see and how they handle it, we have had students witness a suicide attempt and the aftermath of that. Patients dying and dealing with mm -hmm. family members. And I have to tell you, kids are very adaptable. And that is why we are their sounding board. Because like you said, seeing naked people, you know what I mean? It takes a level of maturity and we talk about that during orientation to help them through that. Thank you. Where do they get their day-to-day -day direction from? I mean, they're on a floor, and then who do they report to? How do they make their way around the floor dealing with patients? We hire, but they also report to the nurse manager of that individual floor. They learn the importance of communication. So much is done with text and email. If one of the kids are sick, they are to send an email to that manager as well as to us saying they will not be there to that day. It's accountability to that floor because they're expecting Daisha or Sydney to show up that day. Okay. Just like if one of us were sick for work. It is a learning process. Are there opportunities to see uh, operations? We do not put any students in the operating room for high school. Zero. Um, we have had instances of students passing out and no. things like that. They're not prepared at all to see that and some of them have a reaction uh, that they they were feeling fine one minute and the next minute they weren't it is also limited for college students the students that rotate through the operating room are doing though that as part of their programs um, nursing programs have to rotate through there um, EMS students have to rotate through there um, medicine they have to rotate through there and uh, they accommodate a lot of students, but we have made it a rule not for high school students. And then have you uh, tallied up the amount of money that a student saves between credit hours and CNA certification through this program? Saves as far as for the hospital? No, for the student. Oh. We want to do that. <laughs> we will, that's a great idea. Many, there's several different CNA programs out there. Uh, in fact, we were just looking at one from New Michigan Community College, which I believe was $1,700. Uh, but you can go and take a semester-long class, or you can take a two-week class. They all have to take the same uh, board exam. But uh, I, you know, it's a very good question. It is um, for 12 credits at Delta College, so it's one semester of college plus the CNA program. I mean, it's thousands. Mm -hmm. It's thousands. It's an unbelievable opportunity for them. Absolutely. And the staff really um, embrace them. They become mothers. <laughs> and I can tell you for one of our at-risk students, uh, they helped her find financing, fill out her financial aid form, and her college application. It was unbelievable. Wow. She's going to succeed. Is this the first class this year? Or what year are we in here? Is this is right? the eighth year. It oh, started in year. the fall, first oh, okay. day of school. The next fall, which we'll start interviewing um, the first week in April, um, because they have to know where they're going to be placed right for the fall. Um, so that will be our ninth year. Wow. Let's do this. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. And, and, no, I appreciate that. I think she said um, second semester. Yeah. We'll have a chance for more questions. 
I do want to get uh, our, our next couple of guests up here too. You know, the um, it, it really is fascinating, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, when when we uh, the, you asked about support for the students, and they mentioned that they do rounds on a monthly basis. They check in with their supervisors, obviously check in with the students. There used to just be two sessions a year where they would get together and talk about their experiences <coughs> as a group. Now there's four, and uh, Colleen and Ashley mentioned that. And I tell you, when I go to those sessions and I, and I come away, I have to stop in the parking lot. And I just sit there a little bit and just process what I just heard because it truly is incredible. And these are high school students having a real work experience at the hospital. And, and we, I, I've never laughed as hard as we laugh at some of the stories. And obviously some of the stories are, are heart-wrenching and difficult. Uh, but they're all the things that they're going to have to deal with as adults in that field as well. And it really is incredible that they get to experience that and be a part of it, an important part of it as a high school student. So without further ado, I want to bring Daisha Miller up here, and she's going to talk with you about her experience on the medical oncology floor at the hospital. Thank you, Daisha. Um, hi, my name is Daisha Miller. I work on medical oncology. It consists of 53 and 5600. Um, I want to point out at first what Colleen was saying about how they become our mothers. My floor has actually became a family, and we actually go out a lot on weekends and stuff and go out to dinner with each other and hang out. So it's really mm -hmm. what people don't see from the outside is that they're always there for you, and they want to see you succeed in life. Um, on my floor, I do a lot of what Sydney does, um, helping people to the bathroom, giving bed baths, taking vital signs. But along with that, I get to experience a lot of things that people, that outside wouldn't experience, and a lot of things that my, the nurses themselves haven't experienced. I've got to see heart casts, PET scans, stress tests, um, x-rays, all sorts of fun little things that, you know, people wouldn't think were cool, but I <laughs> find a lot of joy in. <laughs> um, uh, with my floor, it is cancer. So I've seen, I've been a part of people, end of life experiences more than you would think. Um, I do want to point out a story that Scott told me to kind of bring up. My first patient, cancer patient I got close with was coming for chemo treatments, and she ended up, she had lymphoma and was actually beat it, and she was getting her last cancer treatment, but it metastasized, meaning it moved to her brain, and they didn't catch it, and she actually ended up passing away, and that was my first patient to pass away on me. And with that experience, it you would think it would hit you harder, but being with them throughout the process, it gives you a bigger opening in what people go through in life. So from when I started the program originally, I didn't recognize as much as I recognize now when in the field of medical. And with that, I've had many people, patients, families, outreach me, email my parents, send me letters, cards, thanking me for everything they do. So it's not like it's a program where we just learn, but it's a program where we better ourselves individually. And with that, you feel more comfortable in your future. And since I was little, I've always wanted to go to the medical field. And so this program's giving me the opportunity to try it out and see if that really is the field for me. And because of it, I've narrowed down my future into medical, I want to be a pediatric oncologist, and I'm attending Wayne State in the fall to seek that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. I, you have to excuse me, I don't have a question because I'm just wowed. <laughs> Thank you, Deja. Yes, we'll bring everyone back up at the end. <laughs> it is incredible, right? And uh, I want to bring up Jennifer Duncan from Delta College. She does a wonderful job with a certified nursing assistant class. So she, she gets to know the students very well. They have additional work experience with her there. So. The Certified Nursing Assistant course, or CNA as we call it for short, consists of three parts. It, we have lecture, simulation lab, and a clinical component. The lecture and simulation lab are held at Milden Center here and are followed by a clinical component where the students go into an area nursing home and actually care for residents. Our program is 116 hours long and it is worth a total of five college credits. In this class, students learn how to assist residents with all personal care, including eating, dressing and grooming, bathing, and helping people use the bathroom. We cover how to work with people that are suffering from dementia.
Students also learn how to take temperatures, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure, safe ambulation and transfer. Oh, you want me to? Sorry. <laughs> uh, safe ambulation and transfer techniques and CPR and first aid are also included in the class. One of the most important areas of the class teaches how to treat people with dignity and respect, how to communicate and interact competently in a sensitive and compassionate manner with those they are caring for. This is a great introductory class for the healthcare field, and it's a great way for students to decide if a career in healthcare may be for them. Once a student passes all parts of the class, they will receive a training certificate which then enables them to take the state exam. And the state exam consists of two parts, a clinical skills test and a written test. When both parts of that exam are passed, the person earns a certified nursing assistant or CNA certificate. And at age 18, they can get a job. If the cho student chooses to do so, they can get a job as a nurse aide in a variety of settings. Uh, some people see nurse aides as the lowest rung of the healthcare ladder. But I would challenge you to see these caregivers as very important and deserving of respect. They spend more time with the residents than any other member of the healthcare team, including nurses, and their role in healthcare is very important. Some of these people may decide they want to make this first step into a professional career. They can work while attending school and gain important experience. Many of the nursing programs uh, require CNA training to enter their programs, and many other healthcare professions benefit from this training as well. Um, I've had students take this class who are going into physical therapy, occupational therapy, medicine, um, respiratory therapy, physician's assistants, just to name a few. The best part is even if they decide that this isn't a good career choice for them, this information is not wasted. It can be applied to family and friends now or in the future. Um, we have 56 hours of lecture in our course, 28 hours of simulated lab time where they get to learn the skills, and then 32 hours in an actual clinical setting. Thank you. What I'd like to do now is have everybody come up. Oh. <laughs> and at the opportunity <coughs> you to ask questions of, of any of the of the group that are left, and I'll get out of the way first. <laughs> Jennifer, I have a question uh, about the simulation. Is, is that it, does that happen in Midland, or does that happen at Delta? Okay. At, at the hospital? Is that what Midland no. Center is? Midland Center. Jennifer, I'm sorry, when you're answering the question, if you could talk into the mic, because that way we can hear you as well. Oh, got it. Okay. okay, so Midland Center is um, our Delta campus here in Midland on Wheeler Street. Over Gina. And so we have a classroom there and a simulated lab with beds and all of the equipment that we need to practice caring for our residents oh, and patients. Very good. Yes, and then we moved to a clinical site. It's actually in Essexville because it'll, they allow us to bring in uh, more students at one time, so I'm able to get all of their clinical hours completed, hopefully before prom <laughs> um, occurs, because I really don't want to be taking students that have been up all night, um, you know, in to take care of patients the next day. So that's my goal, is to have that all done before we <laughs> get to our clinical setting. Are, I, are oh these classes just for Midland Public School students, or are they in class with other students from other district? school districts, or even students who are just attending sure. Delta? To uh, well, this, this program is a Midland Public Schools sponsored program along okay. with MidMichigan Medical and, the Haas, and, the, uh, and Delta College. However, we've opened up to students throughout the county, uh, so we have students every year, including this year, that participate from Bullet Creek uh, Public Schools, from Coleman Public Schools, and uh, we don't have any Meridian students this year, but we have in the past, and we anticipate again in the future, so. I have a, a I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, Colleen, you said these students are 17-year-olds when they go to work in the hospital sometimes. Yeah. Would you be able to hire 17-year-olds in these jobs? 
We do. We outside have, of this program, I mean. No, they have to be 18. Oh. They have what, to what be. What do you have to do specially then for these? To be able to hire them, I mean, to, for them to be able to work as. We have a contract with the high school, okay. so it is under a work cool. learning based oh, okay. learning program. Uh, for them, they can take the CNA exam um, before they're 18, but they cannot get hired at the hospital until they are 18. As a regular employee? Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Yep. Um, um, for Delta, who administers the state skills exam? Uh, Prometric is the company that the state contracts with, okay. and there are several testing sites okay. around the state that offer that testing. Okay. So. Over the last few days of our class, once we're finished with our clinical experience and the students have passed the final written exam for my class, and they've passed all parts of the class, <coughs> then I um, provide them with the registration sheet and uh, it's called a bulletin of information that Prometric puts out to anybody that has a training certificate. So I provide all of that for them. We, I go through the whole registration process and then it's up to them to send that in when they feel that confident and competent in testing because it's a time test. Uh, so we want them to feel confident. Um, I would say too, I think you asked a question about dual enrolled or students, are, is, are these classes just for high school students? They are not. Um, I, can t I have a capacity of 32 students and um, like we have 15 in the class right now. Uh, my classes are a little bit smaller. The, the high school um, courses go two hours a day, Monday through Thursday. And so that's not always the best <coughs> schedule for other Delta mm -hmm. students. But I do have uh, one student in our class right now. And some years it's more. It just depends on, you know, each person. But we do have high, or excuse me, college students in with the high school students. I have a couple questions for. Our, did you want to follow up on that? Oh answer? no, I actually. I have questions for our students. Student. You guys aren't getting off the hook. Yeah, that that's where I was going. That's Deja, if you don't mind, I'll start yeah, with you. So you're on 53 and 5600, a challenging floor, yeah. um, and I know that because my wife is a urologist and she treats a number of cancer patients. Mm -hmm. uh, so you obviously have the success, success stories and some stories that are not so successful. Mm -hmm. uh, coming out of this program or going through it, how do, you, how do you feel it's changed you and what kind of skill set you think you've developed that you didn't have coming in the front door? Um, like I said before, uh, a lot of the things that I started the program with, personally, emotionally, physically, everything like that, has strengthened in so many ways, like certain situations where I've held hands with people passing away. I probably wouldn't have been able to do that just walking in my first day. And so as the program progresses, it's made me be more adapted towards certain situations. And so leaving it, I believe that I can further my medical career without having like the certain problems. Kind of like how Colleen said, a lot of people, if like surgical rooms, like they pass out in situations or can't handle it. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I haven't handled the situation where I couldn't handle it. Because in the program, you have the opportunity where you can try something or you can say, no, I don't want to do it. Or, and they're totally okay with that. But for me, I want to experience everything. And so being able to see the heartache of it and the good things about it, it feels like you realize, you make, it makes you realize that there's, it's not all good in your future. Like you can adapt and realize that if you can handle it, then you have a future in medical. And if you can't, then you can't. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, Cindy, similar question. The thrust of it is the same. I, I didn't know what floors that you're assigned to or you're kind um, of your daily duties. Yeah, I'm on progressive care, which is kind of like a step down from um, intensive care. Okay. So I have a lot of like heart patients and um, like dementia patients sometimes. So um, I do a lot of the same things that Daisha does as well. But um, I've only had, I believe, three people pass away in the time in the seven months that I've been working there, and I feel that it is kind of hard, and it's been kind of something that I had to get used to, especially one of them who I had been taking care of for two weeks prior. So I. Get to know I got to know them and the family and it was just it was much harder than I thought it was going to be but just being able to work with the team that I had been and the support that they gave me it was a little bit easier to get through the pain of losing that one patient so what kind of skill set are you going to take away from this um, being able to deal with that easily like more ease as far as it can get to be easy I guess um, 
Um, Did it help with your time management? Did yeah, it help with your organizational like, skills? Um, yeah, Stuff it like helped that. with um, being able to do things efficiently, um, especially since the CNA test is timed. So we have to learn to do bed baths and vitals in a certain amount of time. So that'll help being able to work with people and getting to know the skills faster and easier. Great. Thank you for sharing that. For each of you, and you kind of touched, but I'm, I'm intrigued. Obviously, you have a preconception when you walk in the door, <laughs> you know. And I'm my guess is that preconception largely gets blown up a little bit <laughs> in terms of what ends up really <laughs> happening. So, from that perspective, without I don't don't even begin to broach confidentiality. I'm not looking for that. What was your biggest surprise? You know, what did you most surprise you that you had to deal with? Most mm. surprise that you didn't expect to have to deal with? What was your biggest surprise? Um, this is kind of a little, I don't want to grip you guys out or anything, but um, <laughs> one of my patients actually, she had respiratory failure and she started bleeding out of like her bodily orifices, so, like her eyes, her nose, her mouth, her ears, and because her lungs failed and everything, she drowned in her own blood. And so I <laughs> kind of had to watch that, and that I didn't expect to even come close to seeing. So that was probably the weirdest thing I've watched happen. Oh, I'm not looking for weird. Okay, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for the biggest surprise, the thing that <laughs> surprised okay, the you the surprise, most. surprise, if you want me to put it that way, um, was I never thought that, um, like I was talking about the person with the amputated leg, mm -hmm. they had had cancer in the bottom half of their leg and they could just basically get rid of it by cutting it off. And um, I got to see basically the inside of the leg. So I thought that was really cool, So, but I never thought that I'd get to see that in this experience personally, because I didn't think that would be something on my floor. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my question to both of you, either one of you can answer it, is how did you find out about this program? Do we do a good job promoting it? Is there some way that, you know, did you find out about it through a counselor, through a teacher, yeah. or do you have friends that had done it before you that really encouraged you to do it? Well, um, I found out about it. Um, my mom's friend's daughter did it. And then um, also the teacher brought it up a lot and said, hey, there's this program that you guys should look into if you're actually thinking about this. And I think, I think you guys do a really well, a really good job of making sure that we know about it and the skills that it takes and you know having that emotional responsibility to be able to deal with all these things. So um, I actually heard about, I didn't know, I've always wanted to be a co-op in the hospital ever since I found out that you could co-op your senior year. The Healthcare 2 program, I took not, I didn't really know that it helps you get the job in the medical field as precisely as they kind of put it. But one thing that I will say that I would change about it is me and my friend actually talk about it, who's actually the EMS writer. We dis were discussing how we think that we should probably try to emphasize it more your sophomore year because going into your junior year, you're already in the Healthcare One program. But if you have more background, like in the sciences and stuff, like I took two years of I doubled up sciences my years so I could have more background going into it and so we think if you promote it more earlier then people can prepare themselves more because once you actually get in the application process then there's so much stuff that they don't realize they count like attendance and like your grades and all that kind of stuff like that so it, we were thinking that maybe if we could try to bring students more into it in the sophomore year it's going to be more successful your junior and senior year. Thank Great you. idea. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say, we have tried to increase our presence in the school. We have tried to increase our presence in the school. We actually, uh, the schools have been very nice about inviting, you know, community members into the school. We've actually seen debates and quite a lot, biology class. But we do actually go and talk with the students about what the program is about. And then we also have parents' night. But how do you explain to parents, <laughs> you know, some of the things that they experience? It's very difficult to convey what happens over this year. We try, but we never live up to what really happens. You do have to hear from the kids. Mm -hmm. Just one more question. How do the students get to Delta? Do they have to provide their own transportation? Okay. Thank you. This is really you. very wonderful. Thank you. thank you for having us. No, thank, thank you. you for what you do. <laughs>
uh, you know, the maturity, the maturity level of what you have, and I, I venture to guess you had a lot of it, but a lot of it was developed probably through this program. Mm -hmm. and, and seeing your peers come here and I see the difference, is, it's stark. And so you should be congratulated and proud of yourselves. Yes, and best of luck to both of you next year as you continue your education. And you really can leave. You don't have to stay for the rest. <laughs> 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 no, don't Everybody stay. Everybody the students. Students have but, to stay. Well, I was saying, unlike the other students that forget to have us sign their things before yeah. <laughs> the meeting starts, so we don't need to sign anything. It's not about a return on investment. It really is. It's about them. It's developing. Or do you want me to just read it? You can read it too. All right, Should Board of Education like. Matters. So, administration recommends board approval of the 2016 school year calendar, recently ratified as a letter of agreement by the Midland City Association. The calendar features a starting date for classes September 6, 2016, first day after Labor Day, and a final day of school June 15, 2017, which once again has our required 180 days of <coughs> Anything to that, or is there? There's um, one of our targets was to reduce the number of half days, and we were able to do that. There are still um, two, 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 two half days problem. left into the calendar um, that we were able to remove. But um, that's not real popular with parents, so we, we made good yep. progress yep. on that as well. Um, we looked at the um, pre-Labor Day waiver, and mm -hmm. the state at this point has stalled, and they're not granting any of those. Oh, okay, okay. Right. that was going to be a question. That. Yep, yep. Right. And then we have consistent um, holiday break and spring break with the other three districts in the county. Correct. Okay. I move approval of 4.1. Support. All right. Moved by Jerry, supported by Pam. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. It's nice to have it done year. this mm -hmm. early. It's nice to listen to parents and get the number of half days down. It's very good. All right. Next up, we have requests to address the board. I don't think we had any. Did we have any formal requests? Nope. Anyone like to address the board? One left. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. All right. <laughs> Moving on then. Curriculum instruction and assessment. So we have study committee minutes. Is someone prepared to read those? I do. I can read those. Here. Thank you. On uh, March 14th. Brian Bruton, Pat Frizee, Mike Shero, Pam Singer, and Gerald Wasserman uh, attended the Curriculum Instruction Assessment Committee meetings. We had Mary Chilton and Chris Sabrin as guest presenters. Uh, Brian, uh, started with staff development proposals. Brian shared information with the committee on the staff development process and the staff development proposals that were submitted for consideration. The 18 proposals addressed a diverse array of subjects from continued PYP collaboration time to Google, to Google application training for secondary teachers. Several proposals focused on the support of staff in the implementation of science and mathematics major change proposals adopted in January. These proposals will be brought to the March Board of Education meeting for public examination. Implementation will be based on the available funds that are budgeted in the 2016-17 school year. We also heard about Illuminate DNA. Chris Sabrin and Mary Chilton shared a preview of the Illuminate DNA data warehouse system. The demonstration included assessment scanning functions, online assessment capabilities, standard aligned item banks, and district level reporting. Pending approval, a staff development proposal will aim to train users for implementation in the 2016-17 school year. Um, then we adjourn. It was very interesting. The uh, Illuminate data systems is exciting to see all the uh, opportunities we, the district will have to, um, to really highlight areas that need more work students and um, to, to really help teachers as an important tool. So uh, I feel really fortunate that we have that.
tool in our toolbox. All right, moving on, 6.2, are you going to take this, Brian? Sure. Um, I, I won't duplicate what the minute said, so I won't read to you all about <coughs> the proposals, um, but just a very brief overview. Uh, there is a multi-tier vetting process before these proposals are even come to you this evening. They've gone through three stages. Um, the first is the coordinator and or administrator that comes up with the idea, vets the proposals amongst their colleagues, and they have the ability to sign on or sign off their support with the proposal. It then goes to an internal committee made up of administrators and teachers that actually rank the proposals uh, via a multi-point system. And after that, um, our administrative agenda group sees these as well, as well as our CIA internal committee as well. So at this point, they've gone through a multi-tier vetting process, and they'll be here for another phase uh, for a 28-day uh, public comment period. And so if there's anyone in the public or board member that would like to vet these deeper, um, they can give me a call and I can show them the paperwork behind it, the details of the budget, and discuss uh, the strategies involved in the proposal as well too. And um, after that, at the April board meeting, this will be before you for action. And again, all determinant on the budget allocation for the 16-17 school year. The amount of the budget requested is um as low as last year, if not slightly lower. About a thousand dollars less. Okay. Excellent. Good. Good training opportunity. Excellent. Moving on. Item seven. FFO. Jerry. I got that one. Um, we met on March fourteenth. Our guest was Daryl Dombrow, and he's almost not being a guest anymore. He's kind of like <laughs> ad hoc member of the committee. Um, we met uh, with Bart Mello reps at the Central Park Elementary job site. We traveled over, committee toured the demolition work that's been completed, including the separation of the auditorium and the cafeteria and the gym, and looked over the location of the new construction. Uh, it's going to be impressive. I'll just leave it at that. I agree. And uh, Mr. Dombrow uh, did a general review of progress and timeline of current projects and the next bond work to be started as we go forward. Uh, some of the things we heard, and I'll just throw it out there, is uh, looking at the security and adaptability as we transform the buildings to do the security, not do the job twice. Not, not create something, tear it down, and do it again. Uh, Bob Cooper presented the following introduction of Lori Holderby, the new Director of Fiscal Service, uh, replacing Ms. Laux, who's uh, gone on to other things. Established our 2016 Summer School Curriculum Development Extended Year Compensation Rate, which we saw tonight and purchase of food service equipment for H.H. Dow and Midland High Schools, which we saw tonight, and renewal of the Yo and Yo contract for the 15 16 year, which we also saw mm -hmm. tonight. And our next meeting will be April 11th at 5 p.m. Excellent. Thank you very much. Bob? Yeah, but I would mention, too, that if you'd, uh, since our visit just in a week's time, uh, if you go by now, there's even more of the uh, old part of the building coming down, and you're also going to see a, uh, it's kind of interesting, the, the news arising, they're digging out the foundation, they're redoing the cement where they have to in different parts of what exists. So it's, it moves pretty quickly once they get going. Well, new construction has started already. Yep. I, I will comment for the uh, engineers in our community um, that when things were demolished, they found a plethora of one inch square, yeah. not circular, one inch square iron rebar. In, the, in this thing. So it was uh, quite interesting to see that. Okay, then I have for you under 7.2 for information and gifts. I uh, actually added them up. There are 16 of them. They totaled $20,169.79. And like we've been doing lately, I remind the people watching that you'll be able to see these at the end of the meeting. They scroll so you can see them individually. But you'll see they're quite a range from individual groups like the home builders, a couple of the boosters clubs, an anonymous donor, uh, Woodcrest PTO, and then uh, quite a list from the Jefferson uh, Parent Advisory uh, Committee, the JPAC, and then the Midland Area Community Foundation and various funds under their controls. Um, like always, we're very appreciative of that amount of money, and you can see the many diverse things that it goes for at all levels and uh, for all kinds of uh, different items. The one thing under 7.3 does require board action. Um, that is a gift of $5,000. Um, that went to the Midland Highs Robotics team for supplies from Luprizol uh, Corporation. Um, because of the amount of money, it requires your uh, approval tonight. All right. Do I have 
I move support of seven point. I move to approve seven point three. Support. I'll support that. I had a small bit of discussion, and instead of saving it for the end, if you want to see the future of STEM education and CTE stuff in Midland, go to the robotics event. <laughs> Come to the nice board meeting, listen to the nursing stuff, because the robotics event was unreal. I, I've been there many, you know, several mm -hmm. times. It's just, it's just contagious, and uh, I just thank people like Luberzal and the Dows and everybody who are helped and sponsored this. Uh, the members of our community that have the knowledge to help guide. Our, our students through this is just outstanding. So thanks to Lubrizol for this for this donation. All right. With that, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. All right. The ayes have it. Moving on, human resources. We have two memorials we want to recognize tonight. The board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the families of Marion Klingbale Case. Hopefully, I said the name correct. Who passed away on February twenty fourth. This case was the lead secretary at Jefferson Intermediate School for 22 years, retiring in 1990. Mm -hmm. And the second one is Helen Ward, who passed away on February 27th. Ms. Ward was the school secretary at East Lawn Elementary for 12 years, retiring in 1982. We also have a retirement. Uh, most of you know about it this time. The following staff member has announced her retirement, and that's Ms. Pam Castle, the HH Dow principal. And we had interviews for that position today, and continue to progress over the next couple of weeks in making our final decision. Mm -hmm. Wish Pam well. Yeah. Yeah. Item 9, correspondence to and from the Board of Education. You can read that in there. <coughs> Item 10, scheduled activities. Our next general meeting will be April 18th, which is our budget workshop. Is that still at 7 o'clock or is that at Okay. O'clock and at that time we'll move into our study discussion. So I will start on my right with you then. Well, of course, a big thank you to the group, the um, healthcare technology group that came this evening. It was just really uh, overwhelming. I think it's just uh, these young students, it was so overwhelming to hear them talk about their experiences. I, I'm sure those are experiences they never dreamed they'd have in high school. Um, I think it, it undoubtedly really helps them figure out who they are and what they can do. And I think. It's got to give these students just so much more confidence than they ever had before to really realize the things they can do in their lives. I think it's just amazing. So thank you to them. <coughs> I think that's all I really have. Thanks, of course, for all the gifts. That always amazes me every board meeting. Yeah. I try to talk to people about those things sometimes, and they, they say, wow. It's a lot of people just can't imagine those kinds of gifts, you know. So we're really fortunate in that respect. Thank you. That's it. Scott. Um, <coughs> the, the, the presentation tonight uh, was really neat, uh, and it's life-changing to see and experience the things that they've done. Um, it, they really have a very, very high level of maturity to, to go through that program and, to, and, more importantly, to stick with it and want to continue doing that once they leave the program. And by design, that's what it's supposed to do. Um, but I'm sure there, there are plenty of children or kids who go through and say, look, maybe this isn't for me. And, and mm -hmm. the program is supposed to do that as well. Uh, but it was a great presentation. Um, like many of the presentations, uh, I would say this probably ranks in the top three mm -hmm. uh, for me so far. Uh, happy Easter to everybody coming up this weekend. Um, we, uh, my family has recently gone through this bout of this GI bug mm. um, that yes. has gone through and <laughs> ravaged our house for a week. Um, so I would just encourage people who think they're sick to keep your kids home um, <laughs> because it comes back and it keeps going around and around and around. Uh, oh, but, but you wouldn't have come tonight if you... <laughs> of, course I'd, of course not. Come on. Um, thank you for all the gifts and uh, the generosity is just glowing as usual um, and seems to be never ending with our community. Uh, to that end, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, thank you. I touched on it a minute ago. One of the things I'm getting a lot out as I'm talking to people is A, the excitement over the new elementary school, and B, the wondering what this STEM stuff is all about, and is this just another passing fad? And what I've tried to explain to folks is passing fad, that's an interesting word, but look at what the demand's going to be of our students going forward. The healthcare fields, mm -hmm. think of that. 
just technology mm -hmm. uh, in terms of technologists. We're not talking engineers and scientists. People can fix your computer, do those kind of things at the shop. Mm -hmm. you go to the robotics, you'll see that at space. That's the future of what STEM is delivering. When we talk career in tech ed, it's not the necessarily the old model of a wrench turner per se. The guy's fixing the car is doing diagnostics right. electronically now. Right. Okay, he's not kicking the tires, mm -hmm. and and that's what it's all about. So if you wonder if when I say it's a passing fad, eh, curriculum may change, some things may change, but the bottom line is the skill sets our kids are going to need, mm -hmm. both in the universities and not in the universities, are on a different plateau than they used to be, and this is going to help deliver that. And I just it's prima facie evidence of what will be delivered. Come see this. Mm -hmm. Come see the robotics, and that'll just give you a flavor. Of, of where we're headed, and I'm excited about it. I, I, it's easy to get excited when mm -hmm. I'm talking to people. The other thing is, uh, for those who have seen it in the community, I look at Mike's Communique and read it. Um, I was paging through it and wondered, gee, have we ever had a three-pager? I know. <laughs> and then there was a fourth page. Yes. <laughs> and it was stunning the number of accomplishments and things and breadths of opportunities our kids are having, and I hope they take advantage of those. Not every kid can take advantage of everything. Gosh, they would be drowned. Uh, but there's a niche out there, folks, and if you're, if you're wondering if there's something I can play in, it's there. And uh, congratulations to our kids for taking full advantage of these things. Um, one of the ones I'd call out singularly on the athletic side is congratulations to the Midland High School, and good luck tomorrow night as they progress. And uh, thanks to all the volunteers that are out at Dow High for the robotics event. Uh, if you haven't been, go, because I think you'll actually be surprised. Hard to oversell what's out there when the parking lot is overfilled mm -hmm. and they're announcing move cars because they're blocking trucks and people are parking over the church and the gym is full and people are leaning over railings. <laughs> That's an experience you don't see other than maybe a major, major athletic event. To have that happen for the academic event is truly heartening. Wow, I think y'all have hit almost everything. That? <laughs> there you go. Um, I've been doing a lot of reading about STEM, and one of the interesting facts I read was 75% of jobs are STEM jobs. Yeah. And, and um, friends question, uh, you know, why do we want to push jobs like engineering, math? But it's so much more than that. And just the presentation tonight in the hospital, every job in the hospital is a STEM job. And you, you'll challenge yourself to think of a job that isn't related to STEM, that doesn't have a component mm -hmm. that is uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited for programs like this and the hands-on, the project-based. And one of the things that I heard tonight that I really liked was um, the support, the, ad the adult role models and the support that these students are feeling and really being encouraged to um, think higher or, or think of uh, other opportunities other than what they might have uh, been thinking when they first got involved in the program. So very excited about STEM. Um, kudos to Midland High. I went to the Saginaw High Midland High basketball game last week and was on the edge of my seat. It was mm -hmm. very exciting um, game and uh, I hope they do real well. Uh, tomorrow night as well. Spring break, uh, many of our students and families will be taken off this weekend, and I just uh, wish them safe travels and come back to us in a week. That's all I have. And I will be insanely jealous of those going south because of the snow we're predicted to get on Wednesday and Thursday with people leaving on Friday. Yeah, but we got to make sure <laughs> that we get out of here. <laughs> See, I have a few things tonight. First, um, we talked about how we went towards Central. Every time we do anything with this new elementary school and all the things we're doing with the bond, I just get more and more excited. And hopefully that comes through when I talk to other people. I had a chance um, last week. I was at a end of season banquet and I got talking to some parents. And it just, you know, my excitement caused them to have excitement. I took some pictures. I've been, you know, showing people pictures <coughs> inside. Um, it's exciting not only that we're doing this new, but that we've been able to use some of the pieces of the old to help <coughs> on some of the costs. Um, yeah, I had a few things I was going to bring up, some exciting things that have happened the last month, but then the communique came out today, and um, there was even <laughs> more. So um, just a, a couple highlights from that. One, obviously, I um, 
got to attend the down um, or the high school state <laughs> swim meet. So my son was swimming in it, but it brought to light once again to thank just the administrator, Pam Castle, who's retiring. She was there, you know, for the swim meet. And I know anytime I go to any event, administrators are just so supportive and teachers and you know, everyone coming out to support these kids, not during a normal work day. And I really appreciate that administrators take their time to do that. So I know Pam was tweeting during the, you know, meet, keeping everyone um, up to date. And also good luck to Midland High. Um, tomorrow night I had the opportunity, Friday night at the Booster Bash to talk to um, one of the parents or one of the players on the team. and. I was just saying, he was saying to me, thank you so much for everything you do for the district. And I said, you know, thank you so much because he was one of those parents that when my son was little, he made sure that we had basketball, two teams of basketball, you know, two basketball teams all the way through elementary school. And it just, everyone contributes in different ways in this district, but so many people contribute to so many different ways to give our kids opportunity. Um, Let's see, Booster Bash was great. Thank you to everybody that came out to that on Friday night. Once again, a great opportunity to um, meet and talk with a lot of people, not only from your school, but from the school across town. And um, lastly, like you said, everyone be very safe on spring break and come back and ready to finish up the year. Thank you. Mike? A couple items. Um, last week, Brian and I had a chance to present to about 80 real estate agents in town. Um, we, we attended their board of realtors, and it was a great opportunity to talk about all the opportunities to provide to our students and um, the bond program and what's coming forward. And um, we got a very nice uh, email back about that information. So really well to connect to our real estate agents to help them sell our community to future uh, customers as well. Um, teacher recruitment. Um, I'm the first one out of the box. No one wanted to go to the Upper Peninsula. And so <laughs> the superintendent being the leader, right, you got to take the, the charge. Okay. And so I am heading to Northern Michigan tomorrow afternoon and be recruiting on Wednesday teachers. And hopefully that snowstorm doesn't hit while I'm in the UP oh and my. I get stuck mm -hmm. there for, for spring break. But on the bridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hope they don't close the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, um, we are off to recruiting many job fairs. And uh, we have the MPS job fair that we're going to hold. First time I had my understanding in a long, long time. And we have over 300 candidates registered. We'll be used in the Dow Gymnasium, and we hope we can hold them all in there. So it's going to be a very busy day. Um, so um, we, you know, we worry with 46 retirees of filling um, with quality. But uh, if you look at just the response to our own job fair and the fact that we're attending, I think, nearly 20 job fairs in two or three states, I think we'll, we'll be just fine as we go forward. Um, as I told you earlier, we started in this, um, interviews for our HH Dow principalship. That will have probably some trickle-down effect because you've got to assume that probably the principal will come within our system as well. And um, we have a number of assistant principal positions already open. We'll be posting three of those. Or we may even have done that today. I, I probably should check. But it's either today or tomorrow. We'll be posting three of those assistant principal positions as well to get a good aggressive start on making sure we have quality candidates there as we go forward. Um, the communique when Cindy was finishing it today and, and she was saying, Mike, is it okay if I go to four pages? <laughs> um, I, it, I think the, the part that um, opportunity, this community is just amazing and we're just a part of that community. It's, a, it's not just us, it's so many pieces of that happen. And these two young ladies that spoke today you know, and I've been doing this for 31 years now. I've been around a lot of high school kids, and um, these are two, you, and uh, Jerry, you said it well, the maturity that these two showed mm -hmm. today is, that's the part, that's our product, and, and that, that's our community product. That was just fabulous to see that piece of it, and that's what all those opportunities provide. Jerry and I were talking before the meeting. Um, there's certainly, no matter what your niche is, we have something in the middle public schools for you, so. That's all I have for you. Good time on school days. Oh, yes, with snowstorm coming, Jerry kind of mentioned school days. We have one left. So, so I'll, despite early in the year everyone was angry, I wasn't calling any snow days. Uh, we're probably one of the few school districts still with one left. And so we'll see what happens on Thursday, see how severe it gets. But I don't like to call snow days. I like to keep kids in school and teach them learning. So, so how's your work? Thanks for calling us. Well, we'll, we'll get up. We'll get up in the morning and see how 
That's just what it looks like. But you know, we want kids to go to school to learn as well. Mm -hmm. So, right. Anything else? All right. If not, it's adjourned.